Is involved in an incident inside the box as Havertz headed the ball over the top. But with three minutes played already in added time, I suspect we'll probably get three or four more minutes. It's Chelsea 1, Brentford 4. A quite remarkable afternoon we've witnessed here at Stamford Bridge after a really quiet opening half where the closest we came was Hakim Ziyech from the right-hand side. His shot saved by David Ray, who just made his Spanish international debut earlier this week. What a week he's had and what a victory this is going to be for Brentford. And Stamford Bridge, you look at it now, it's almost empty apart from that left-hand corner as I see now Brentford fans Perhaps the greatest day of their life supporting their clubs. A remarkable victory five miles down the road. That's not far that they've had to travel to go and witness an extraordinary victory for their side as Chelsea look to come forward once again. And this would now be a consolation because we're deep into this game and Brentford defending so well. Ivan Tony picks the ball up on the halfway line. They're not going to go and score another, are they? He's the only man who hasn't got his way on the score sheet today. Tony whips the ball from the right into... Ruslev on the right-hand side, who's trying to find an opening here. It nearly falls to Sergi Canals, who's very frustrated that he didn't get on the score sheet. But Brentford do, in fact, look like they're going to have a corner here. And Edouard Mendy throws away the ball in disgust because he knows his side are going to leave here with absolutely nothing. And this is not a result we could have predicted. When you consider all the uncertainty going on around Chelsea at the moment, around the ownership, they still continue to win. They won every single match in March. Six wins in a row. They've won five in all in the Premier League. But this is going to go down as a heavy loss against their West London rivals. Ericsson, who whips the ball in from the right-hand side. It's Janssen who tries to flick something there. But the ball goes out for a goal kick and Mendy will try and set up a move quite quickly here. But he's not going to have enough time to, to force anything of note. The referee, Andy Madley, has a look at his watch to see how long is left to play. And he blows his whistle. And we have witnessed something momentous here at Stamford Bridge today. It's finished. Chelsea 1, Brentford 4. Brentford win this West London derby for the first time in more than 80 years, the Bees are buzzing their way to securing their top flight status. Thomas Frank said pre-match it would be the result of the season for Brentford if they won. It could be the biggest win in their history as they thrashed their West London rivals. It was Antonio Rudiger who put the Blues in front early in the second half, a screamer from distance. But minutes later, the Bees levelled through Vitaly Yanel. He found the top left-hand corner from the edge of the box. And the Brentford fans in that left-hand corner, they were in heaven minutes later when Mbumo found Eriksson in the box and he dinked the ball over Mendy to bag his first club goal since his return to football. The Bees were in dreamland shortly after. Yanel with a second from a tight angle on the left after a perler of a pass from Tony. Three goals in ten second-half minutes. It's a rare Premier League defeat for Thomas Tuchel's side. And matters were made even worse towards the end. Johan Visser notching up Brentford's fourth. It's Chelsea's first loss since the club was put up for sale. And a first defeat here at Stamford Bridge since September. A famous win for the Bees. It finished here at Stamford Bridge. Chelsea won. Brentford four. James Savandra, thank you for your wonderful work. Chelsea's winning run comes to a shuddering halt. A staggering win for Brentford, Thomas Frank's side. Let's get to Molyneux for the closing stages of that West Midlands derby with Nigel Pearson. Walls 2, Villa 1 is the scoreline here and we're in the last minute of four added on at the end of this game. I suspect there'll be more than that though because there's been controversy, there's been players uh, squaring up to each other, some ill feeling creeping into this match. And Molyneux today as uh, just we see Matty Cash right-footed thread the ball across and it looks as though it might have nestled in the far corner of the net but uh, Saar has watched it out and Aston Villa now have a corner in the fifth minute of added on time at the end of this game. Johnny Otto with the first goal for Wolves. Ashley Young with an own goal made it 2-0 to the Molyneux men. And Ollie Watkins' penalty got Villa back into it on 85 minutes. And now this will probably be the last passage of play that we'll see in this game as uh, Wolves are able to just about see that clear. And you can hear the roar of the crowd. It's a happy Molyneux home fan base today because Darren England has brought to a halt this match, this Midlands derby, and it's Wolverhampton Wanderers who have just held on by their fingertips at the end of what has been a really, really hard-fought West Midlands derby. 
the Villa fans over on that far side head out of the stadium disappointed but their players have dug deep in this second half worked hard tried everything and this is with a Villa side with a Philippe Coutinho who was a pale shadow of the player that we know he can be he wasn't at the races today and Wolverhampton Wanderers without Ruben Neves without Raul Jimenez have just pulled off a fabulous victory on home turf after their 3-2 defeat here last time out by Leeds United quite a match here it was ill-tempered I thought we may have seen a red card or two because Darren England was really struggling to maintain control of this match but they're all shaking hands now it's been a real ding-dong derby here at Molyneux this afternoon and it's the home side who take the three points away from this one it's finished at Molyneux Wolverhampton Wanderers 2 Aston Villa 1 Nigel, thank you. Let's bring you the full-time report here at Turf Moor. Top value company alongside me all afternoon, Mickey Gray. Where it has finished. Burnley nil, Manchester City 2. Deadlock broken on four minutes. Great play from Rodri out to Raheem Sterling, who just played a lovely ball into the path of Kevin De Bruyne just to volley it into the back of the net. Then it was all Manchester City and they got their second goal. A lovely given goal with De Bruyne and Raheem Sterling down the right-hand side. A pull back to the penalty area and Ilkay Gundogan just slotted the ball into the back of the net. Burnley have got to show more in the final 10 games of the season or they are looking down at the Championship next season. It's back to the top of the table for Manchester City flying high after that big performance from Liverpool earlier on in the day but Pep Guardiola, the perfect remedy for that big game they've got coming up on Tuesday night against Atletico Madrid in the Champions League but it was an easy day at the afternoon for his side today. He'll be thrilled to pieces picking up all three points. Back to the top of the table. Job done. Burnley nil, Manchester City 2. Thank you, very, thank you very much. Game day live on Talks. But where are we going next? Has the full time whistle gone at Ellen Road? It has. It's bringing the story of the game with Lucy Ward alongside Mark Wilson. Yeah, it ends here. Leeds United 1 at Southampton 1. Leeds in front at half time, courtesy of Jack Harrison's scramble finish on 29 minutes after good work from Rafinha. His cross was uh, fingertipped away by force. It fell to the feet of Harrison, who poked it home from close range. But then, probably the one true moment of quality in the second half. James Ward proud converting a free kick from 20 yards out edge of the area right into the top corner Melier may have got a fingertip on it but he was never going to keep it out it was a real quality finish and it came on the back of a great run from Kyle Walker-Peters both sides tried both sides threw bodies forward Phillips and Gelhart came on for Leeds as they pushed for a winner their best chance really fell to Rafinha edge of the box and he put his shot over the top Southampton they had a chance just after they equalised through Brozier but truth be told this was probably the fair result. Lucy Ward, neither side quite did enough to win. No, I think that Jaws probably about right, isn't it? There were lots of endeavour and effort in that second half, but really not much quality at all, obviously apart from Ward Prowse's free kick. I think at the start of the second half, Southampton got control of the, the midfield, they changed the shape towards the end of the first half and continued into the second half, and Leeds had to bring Calvin Phillips on to just wrestle a bit of control back from that, but I think neither team was clinical enough in front of goal, neither desperately wanted to lose it, and, and and neither did enough to win it. Yeah, interesting. It leads now eight points above the bottom three. They go to Watford next week. That will be a massive, massive result. Uh, if they can get a win there, it may well secure their Premier League survival. For Southampton, it ends a run of four successive defeats. It ends at Ellen Road. Leeds one, Southampton one. Chris, I'll bring you full time at the Amex Stadium. Don't worry, Brighton's a decent night out. Joe Shannon. It finished Brighton nil, Norwich nil. Both sides stopped the rot after six consecutive Premier League defeats each. But Graham Potter will be disbelieving as to how Brighton haven't won this. The Seagulls have gone five home league games without a goal for the first time in their history, while Norwich are now seven points from safety with just eight games to go. Brighton did everything but score. Neil Morpé missed a penalty in the first half, hit the side netting and angled a first-time effort just wide when well-placed, while Tim Krul made a stunning save to deny Joel Veltman from close range and Alexis McAllister from distance. It was attack v defence at times, though Norwich could have won it themselves late on, but Milot Rashica volleyed over from Temu Puki's cross. Boos from some of the home fans at the end. It finishes Brighton nil, Norwich nil. Into the Championship and full-time from the Kyan Prince Foundation Stadium. Ray Parler this afternoon has been alongside TalkSports' Alfie Reynolds. 
full-time QPR nil, Fulham two. Fulham move a step closer to confirming their return to the Premier League. And they've won here thanks to Aleksandra Mitrovic's 36th and 37th championship goals of the season. The first was a finish inside the six-yard box in the opening 45 minutes. And the second saw him slot home a penalty after half-time when Lee Wallace was penalised for a handball. Nico Williams had hooked the ball back into the penalty area. As for QPR, they're three points outside the playoffs, but the big concern for Mark Warburton will be the fact his side have...